internet friend this is magic brad with synergy cafe and the synergy collaborative and i got my uh this is looks like a duck but it's a minnesota loon that's our state bird here so i got my friend david david you're down in costa rica right now i am in costa rica i'm on the osa peninsula you got good uh, southern coast of southern costa rica good internet connection normally they don't have good internet connection in third world countries is, Co is costa rica considered a third world country I would not say so, okay? <laughs> uh, the middle class, it's probably 95% middle class, okay? Very mm. little poverty, no army, no military. There's more teachers in Costa Rica than police. There you go. That's, that's good. Hey, we should uh, yeah. take, a, take a note up here in the United States. We could use more teachers and less police. Anyway, so how long have you been down in Costa Rica? Going on 12 years. Okay, you got now, family then? Uh, I don't have family. I mean, I have my Tico family, okay. you know, my <laughs> friends and everything else. And uh, I just love the lifestyle. The lifestyle is wonderful. I can imagine. Yeah. I, I was going to retire in Bali um, mm -hmm. earlier, and I, that was my, part of my plan because I found a place I could stay over there for 60 bucks a month, including breakfast. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Would Can't have been a sweet that. deal. But uh, things changed, got married. Found a wonderful person to spend the rest of my life with. But she's a Spanish teacher. She, she used to be a Spanish teacher. So she speaks Good. fluent Spanish. So when I go down there, she can be my interpreter. <laughs> okay. All right. Do, do they speak English down there too? Uh, where I'm at, there's some people that speak English. But if you get into a bigger community, like a resort community or a place sure. where, you know, um, travelers go a lot of people will speak the english language but down here not so much got it i live in a little quiet beach town puerto Jimenez, so i speak fairly good spanish now so are you on the osa peninsula i am on the osa peninsula okay because okay, nick is inland in that san buenos area so mm -hmm. sort of north i think so i'm Menace, which is all the way down the osa peninsula before you get to the park Okay. Well, the reason I want to chat with you on this is because of our photography retreat that's coming up, and you are a photographer, because I've seen some of your stuff on Facebook. All right. Uh, I am a photographer. Are those real, like, macaws and toucans that you took pictures of? Because they look like, you know, National Geographic kind of stuff. <laughs> it, it, it's the most diverse place in the world to be as far as wildlife and flora and the National Park. Corcovado Park is amazing. I mean, these macaw shots that, that I'm posting on Facebook, they're right in my front yard in my almond trees. Like yesterday morning, the, the macaws show up, and it's, it's incredible. I'm five feet away from them. God, that's got to be cool. When I, I used to vacation in Jamaica a lot, and one of my favorite things to do was wake up early before the sun came up and grab my little Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee and sit and listen to the birds and all the wildlife, and then the sun starts coming up. And I suppose you get to experience that there with the toucans and the, what do they got, macaws my, and monkeys? It's my favorite part of the day. I usually wake up at 4 o'clock, I have my coffee, and the first thing you hear is the howler monkeys waking up. You know, the big males are, you know, making a rocket, and then the green parrots start flying over, then the macaws show up, and then the toucans, and the sun comes up. It's, it, it's, it's magical. Wow, every day, huh? Every day. Nice. <laughs> Living in the jungle. So, you know, I've done some research uh, with, uh, with Costa Rica and things. I've not been down there yet. My friend Nick that has the property and things where we're going to be doing this retreat, he's been down there for like 12, 13 years, something like that. But I have not been down there, but doing my research. Um, it sounds like there's uh, other activities and things. I know that zip lining is something that can happen down there and uh, whale watching. And I even heard that deep sea fishing is, uh, is prominent out that area. Deep sea fishing, zip lining, of course, there's all sorts of zip lines all over Costa Rica, depending on where you want to be. There's lots of zip line. Deep sea fishing is very popular. There's, you know, a big resort in Los Sueños that, you know, that hosts, you know, fishing tournaments down here. Uh, to go deep, deep sea fishing, you have to get to blue water. Okay. Which is north? It, well, you just have to go further into the Pacific until oh. you get into deep water. Oh, I get it. That's a term, an ocean term. I thought maybe it it's was a, the area. It's an ocean term. <laughs> yeah, it's an ocean term. And so by on the Osa, the blue water is only like five miles out. So you're fishing within 30 minutes. Okay. 
So as far as the photography element of stuff, I understand that there's also places to do like horseback riding. So we're looking to do some of that kind of stuff where we can kind of take the horses into the jungle. And that's where I suppose you can kind of capture a lot of stuff that the normal tourist does not get to see. There's, diff there's different companies that have horseback riding where you can go in the jungle, you can go on the beach. And uh, nice ho most of the horses down here are fairly small. I mean, equivalent to America, there would almost be like a pony. Oh, really? But they still get yeah, you up not, in the jungle. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not very big horses. Mm -hmm. Now, a, a part of the reason I wanted to have somebody that's local down in Costa Rica to help us with this photography retreat is there's things that happen down there that we don't know about. I mean, even Nick probably doesn't know about because you've been down there long enough. You've experienced the, mm -hmm. the from, from a photographer's eye. I remember when I was in uh, Bali, there was this certain place that you'd go and like at around six o'clock, all these white birds would come flying in and just load the trees up. But there weren't yep. there weren't around. And then all of a sudden, at six o'clock, all these birds started coming in. Do you have stuff like that there? That uh, unusual. We do. Like white faced monkeys. You're going to see white faced monkeys in the mangrove too, in the mangroves when the tide is low, because then they come in and they eat the crabs and they go in the mud and they eat. You're not going to see them on high tide. So there's different different things you know once you live here right like if you want to get good white face monkey shots you wait for a low tide go to the mangroves and you'll get them the green parrots first thing in the morning and mm. uh the blue morph butterflies they like certain plants okay and you find the plants there's one little river that i go to and i put out rotten bananas and i put them on all the rocks and then the blue morphs show up and it once again it's magical so okay. there's different things you get to know, you know, when you live here in Costa Rica, where you can go and see different animals or different wildlife or different flora for that matter. July, like when we're going to do this retreat, it's whales. It's big humpback whales off, off the coast of Pacific oh, and Drake cool. Bay. And so we're going we're gonna to go on these, th this uh, whale tour where you're going to be able to swim with these dolphins and everything else, and the whales are going to be breaching right by the boat. It's, it's, it's an incredible experience. Once again, they're here through July through October. Then the turtles. The turtles hatch at certain times of the year also. Okay, very cool. Local well, that, knowledge. That's very exciting because it, it, you do need someone that knows these things so you can be able to yes. get to the right space. Because like you said, if, you, mm -hmm. if the monkeys aren't there during the tide, then... You're not going to take mm -hmm. a picture. If a monkey's not there, you can't take a picture of it. It's kind of like if a, That's right. if a photographer takes a picture of a monkey and he's not there, did he take a picture of a monkey? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, again, I don't like to do these too long because people have their valuable right. time. So I uh, just like to get the, mm -hmm. the basics out. But if, we, uh, if you're interested, we'll do some more of these and more updates on other things that, uh, that maybe some of the things that you're going to be showing us and teaching us at the retreat. We'll go over some of that kind of stuff too. That so, would be wonderful. So I'm going to sign this one off and then beam it up to the cosmos, as I say. I say beam that bad boy up to the Internet, and we'll propagate right. it out and share it with some of our photographer and videographer friends. There you go. And okay. have a great day in Puerto okay. Vida. Talk to you soon. Thanks, David. You bet. Bye.